today we have Tyler uh, Orpagel, who is the incumbent right now in the 27th uh, Wisconsin Assembly District, and uh, his challenger, Nanette uh, Boulabash, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, she's running on the Democratic, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Democratic ticket. Um, just so you're aware, just kind of, I, I gave you a map on your tables just so you can see where the districts are. Uh, Wisconsin has 33 Senate districts, 99 Assembly districts. Uh, what's applicable to us mainly is the 27th, which is the one we're going to be hearing about today from Nanette and Tyler. And then uh, the other ones in our district are Katzma and Clark. And I believe both these, uh, it's kind of a rematch, isn't it, from two years ago? So it should be interesting. Um, overall, next week we're going to have uh, Lemahue and Welton, who uh, they have the, uh, the ninth Senate district, which encompasses 25, 6, and 7 of the assembly districts. So with that, does anybody, either of you want to go first? Or should I flip a coin? Anybody? I don't have a coin, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that you tell me which one I'm holding. The pepper or the pepper or the salt. I'll let you go, Nanette. The salt. Huh? Pepper. I just it's Tyler. Sorry. Uh, you might want to wash those. Uh, so I think we'll turn it over. What we'll do is I'm going to time it. It's going to be 10 minutes each, and we'll leave five minutes for questions. At nine minutes, I'll be going like this. you got a minute to finish, and then uh, we'll both have you come up and uh, just field some questions for us. Okay. If you can come up here, or if you want to move around. Yep. Is it okay if I wander? I'm on. Get up a wanderer. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much, uh, Scott, for inviting us and for uh, having us as your guest. Um, I, uh, Rotary has a bit of a special place in my heart. I'm a, a former Rotarian. Uh, I was in Rotary for a number of years and then uh, the Plymouth Rotary Club. And uh, then when they meet on Wednesdays at noon, and uh, that was a little tougher to get there. So if you're looking for any new recruits, uh, Mondays at noon work a little better for me. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I just really want to. <laughs> I just really want to uh, uh, thank you guys for all that you do in our community. Um, I, I know uh, your polio projects, and I know you do a lot with scholarships for students continuing on to uh, tech, tech college or uh, for your university. So, uh, and then Tony's program with the Emerald Ash Board. Uh, just really, your community service uh, is much appreciated uh, through, throughout the community. So, with that being said, uh, I'm Tyler. I live in Plymouth with my wife, Jenny, and our uh, little two-and-a-half-year-old, Landon, who keeps us uh, extra busy when we're not uh, running around. And I just wanted to talk today to you uh, about some of the things that we've done uh, in, in the state legislature over the past two and four years since uh, I've been in office. And I've kind of picked out the themes that uh, really I've uh, tried to advocate for and are important to me and uh, things that I would like to see us continue to improve on uh, over the next two years uh, and beyond. Uh, and the first is uh, having a two and a half year old really makes you uh, understand uh, education in our education system. And um, since I've been in office, we've really tried to invest in uh, our education system. We're making historic investments. We have more choice than ever for parents, whether that's a, a private school for, uh, for their families, for someone who's lower income, or whether it's uh, open enrolling to another school district that might fit their needs. Um, we, we really are offering more choice than ever. Um, one of the really cool things that we've done this last legislative session is Representative Joel Kitchens uh, up in uh, the Kiwani Door County area, who's a former school board member, was asked to head a commission on uh, school funding. Uh, many of you might not know, a lot of our area schools kind of get the short end of the shaft. Um, we meet every month with our uh, school administrators from the county. And most of our schools in the area um, get their what are considered frugal or low spending districts. So they already start off with a lower amount uh, than what some of the other uh, school districts have. That all goes back to a complicated formula uh, back to 1993. But one of the things I, uh, that we're looking at doing is um, helping out those schools, um, also um, 
helping to aid with uh, uh, English language learning students uh, and give, I know there's a lot in the Sheboygan School District, um, making sure that uh, they are getting compensated for educating those students who tend to be a little bit more expensive, um, as well as uh, our special education students. Um, one of the really cool things that, that we did in uh, really uh, mental health is something that I'd like to continue to work on, working with, with the county. Um, the, there was a bill that we passed that kind of broke down some of the barriers that uh, got students mental health services in the schools. Now schools can offer mental health services to students where they weren't able to do that before. And um, in some cases, uh, bill Medicaid to recoup some of the costs that they have. Um, workforce. Workforce is a huge issue. Um, we've gone from uh, talking about job creation to uh, job placement. I hear all the time from employers about uh, trouble that they're having, uh, getting quality candidates. We've really tried to uh, invest in our young people so that they're more prepared to come out of college for whatever step in life is next, whether it's straight into the workforce. We've been uh, really uh, pushing the Youth Apprenticeship Program. I sit on the board of the Youth Apprenticeship, and Sheboygan County has uh, is one of the highest performing counties in the uh, in the state for youth apprenticeships. Or whether it's a technical college or a university, we've been trying to increase uh, funding for paid internships and uh, also uh, in our local schools uh, grants for for fab labs. Um, So um, that kind of leads into uh, talent attraction. You know, one of the things that uh, I've talked about and I've heard about is how there's just not enough bodies. We need more bodies. We definitely do need to keep, uh, do things to keep our college graduates uh, here in our state. Um, I, I'm very interested. I know uh, the governor had talked about a uh, tax credit program for uh, college graduates that if they were to stay here for five years could uh, get a tax credit. And that's something I've thought about as I've talked with folks from across the U.S. Um, one of the things that they mention is uh, their, uh, the, the way if you can get people, to uh, young people to stay here and uh, for, you know, start a family, get a house, things like that they're more likely to, to remain in, in the community and part of the community. Now things like that are starting to change. I, I'm glad uh, uh, the mayor and the city have been investing in uh, uh, improving our rental housing. Uh, from what I know is a lot of uh, young people my age and younger uh, change jobs an awful lot more than they used to. Um, so it's important here that we have the uh, amenities to attract uh, and retain uh, our young folks. And then um, one of the other things that's really uh, important to me um, is, is health care. So it's, it's something I really don't talk about much, uh, never really have, but uh, because of some of the political ads and things like that that are going on out there, um, I really want to talk about, uh, I'm a type 1 diabetic, uh, so I really, um, I, and I've had the fortune of being able to have good health care, uh, but I know there are people out there who... Uh, may not be in a situation. In the legislature, the past session, the assembly passed uh, a bill that would not uh, allow you to be denied for a pre-existing condition uh, as long as you had continuous coverage and then instructed the Office of the Commissioner of Insurance to set up uh, high-risk pools and things like that to help people maintain continuous coverage. Um, we also passed a bill uh, for insurance cost sharing that uh, it, there was just a Journal Sentinel article uh, this afternoon that um, they expect uh, premiums that are on the exchange to go down by uh, in some cases 30 percent but a uh, statewide average of about four four and a half percent and then um, also allowing small businesses to pool with a few employees who are part of a trade association uh, to pool their resources together um, so those are kind of the, the highlights of things that uh, I've been working on I've really tried to be an advocate for Sheboygan County and Manitowoc County. Um, and uh, one of the things I know, I, I try and keep an open door, uh, whether it's Kristen or Adam or uh, a number of folks who come down on occasion to, to meet with me, I try and be available and visible in the community uh, and uh, hopefully approachable. Um, and then 
Uh, one of the other uh, kind of things that uh, maybe is good news, I don't know if anybody's been on Facebook and seen it today, but we just got off the phone with uh, DOT, who announced that they signed the record of decision at 10 o'clock today for a four-lane expansion of Highway 23. Um, and really, all the credit for that goes to all of you locally for keeping the pressure on, um, and the DOT, who's really broke down barriers in uh, timelines and making sure that this thing uh, keeps moving on. I know it's really important to you. It's the, the thing that everybody asks me and talks to me about uh, when, I, when they see me in the grocery store or whatever. Um, and uh, I, I'm happy to say that uh, the process from here is about 150, there's a 150 day uh, period for someone to file a lawsuit uh, or, or try and or challenge it. And then uh, after that, DOT says that they will be begin letting the bids, and hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, dirt will be turned uh, next summer. So uh, we all have that to look forward to. Really, I, I do want to thank you for your time uh, and for uh, engaging uh, in the political process. I know it's messy, and we, everybody wants to rip their computers, uh, <laughs> uh, throw away their tablets, or get off of Facebook, or... Um, or, or stuff, but really, um, in my time in the legislature, uh, I've tried to be someone who can work across the aisle and work with uh, colleagues from different parts of the state, different political parties, people with different ideas, because I realize I don't have all the solutions, I don't have all the right answers, I uh, only have one person's perspective, so I've really tried to be somebody who uh, has learned from other people and uh, be respectful and uh, be an advocate for you because there really is nothing that makes me happier, no bill signing, no uh, legislative accomplishment that makes me happier than when somebody comes up to me and says, hey, I contacted you or your office and you were able to fix a problem um, that, that I've been having. So really that's, uh, that, that's, that's really why I uh, have run again um, because I really want to be your advocate and your liaison to uh, Madison. So thank you very much and look forward to any questions anybody has. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, Tyler, for agreeing to this forum. Oh, not all the candidates are, are doing that. And I think the least we can do for the public is to allow them to get to know all of us. So it's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I did bring my own cheering section. I've got a teacher. I've got an arts administrator. Um, I've got a grant writer and a poet, Lisa, who's also my campaign manager. How cool is that to have a poet? I've got a healthcare consultant, um, an activist, and we've got Marcos, who's in a class all his own. If you don't know Marcos Rivera, I really highly recommend you get to know him. He is part of Idea Works. He's also a member of Voces de la Frontera. He's doing great things for our community, and he will do even more great things if we are smart enough to keep him. So, thank you, Scott. Some of you know, um, I ran two years ago for the same seat. It was so rewarding, and for me, empowering. I've spent much of the last two years encouraging other people to run. I'm running again for the same seat against the same opponent, because the issues that concerned me in 2016 still concern me, and I'm not a quitter. It's an honor to run for office because you meet so many fantastic people. I was determined this time to get myself out of my silo and listen to other points of view, and I have. I've talked, my next door neighbor is a Trump supporter. He voted for Trump, I did not. I understand people voted for him, and of course this is a federal office, because they wanted to change the status quo, it was not working for them. I'm listening to those things. I'm listening to people I didn't before. Right now, with the election only a few weeks ago, most candidates are spending every moment possible going door to door, talking to voters one-on-one. -on -one. It's the most effective way you to get your name out there. I'm sure Tyler's doing the same. In fact, I know because I've come across your literature at the doors, and you come across mine, I'll bet. When we ask people what they're most concerned about, the same issues tend to keep coming up. Um, yes, Highway 23 is one of them. Um, two decades ago, that long ago when it was first proposed, I was the president of the local Sierra Club, so I was skeptical. I thought we could get by with passing lanes, but I will agree that my um, 
views on that have changed. I couldn't attend the public hearing that we held at the beginning of the summer, but I read the testimony. And when you've got EMTs and ambulance drivers and sheriffs and police officers, the first people on the scene of an accident, telling you we want four-lane highways, I think it's time to listen. So I, I'm fully on board with that one. People talk, the very first thing most people talk about is health care, older people, um, but younger people too, who've grown up with a chronic condition like diabetes. Um, <coughs> my daughter enjoys being on my health plan, which I got from healthcare.gov. Um, I'm married to a dairy farmer, and in the years when I wasn't teaching or working as a librarian, we just went without. I was the only one with a chronic condition, asthma, and mammograms and those kind of things I needed to do. So, you know, we just paid cash. Um, so I was thrilled when the Affordable Care Act finally kicked in. It's helped my family from any others. It's been a lifesaver. It's reasonably affordable. But I'm also where the people in Minnesota pay 50% less in health care premiums than we do. No matter what health care plan they're on, that's the average. They took the Medicaid money, we did not. That's one of the things I would change. People also bring up public schools. School of referendums pass far more often than they fail because we love our public schools. People agree to raise their own property taxes time and time again. More than a million Wisconsinites have done so in the past seven years. My own district, Elkhart Lakeland Beulah, has won on the ballot this year for operating expenses. Operating expenses. We didn't used to have to do that. <coughs> I'm glad that our current governor is finally willing to invest more in education after $800 million in cuts. But it's still not enough. We're still spending less in general state aid than we did in 2010. Other issues that come up when I go door to door are the state of the roads. Yes, Foxconn, most people I talk to are skeptical. And legalizing marijuana, and I'm happy to talk to you about that. Medical marijuana, you bet, absolutely. When the American Legion wants us to legalize medical marijuana, I think we should listen. Because they know it can help veterans get off of, um, actually, help with opioid addiction and PSDT. But the issue that comes up all the time, all the time, and it hits me, is why don't you guys get along? They're tired of the polarized state. People are tired, tired of fighting between parties. They want us to get things done. They want compromise. They want flexibility. They want us to just solve problems and quit pointing fingers. I'm on board for that. I'm running because I want that too. When I first moved to Wisconsin from Illinois, I thought I hit the jackpot. The roads were much better than Illinois back then. And I was I worked my way through college at Lakeland, it was Lakeland College at the time as a reporter for WHBL. I was in this room when Governor Thompson, Tommy Thompson, was first running for office. <coughs> Back then, it was either the Alex or the Rotary, I can't remember. It was an all-male group, so I was one of the few women. Um, but there were some wives there, too. I knew, I knew that guy was going to win. The first guy I interviewed was Lee Dreyfus, who was running for governor in 1978. He was a moderate. I was there at the beginning of Steve Castell's career. He was Tyler's predecessor for this office in the 27th District. He was a moderate, too. He left uh, education chair when he ended he said his job, he thought he, he saw himself as wanting to stop bad education bills. And he was no longer able to do that from his own party when he ended. So I miss that time when we were able to work together, and I think we can get back together. How much time do I have, Jim? Three minutes. Okay, quick economic plan. Sheboygan County stands apart from many Wisconsin communities that we still make things here. I learned that from Paul Bartelt when I attended the Chamber's Friday Forum a couple weeks ago. He was so awesome. Our manufacturing base is strong, and we all benefit from the fact that so many of our top employers are owned by local families with deep ties to this community. The new Innovation District, planned in Sheboygan on the eastern edge of Indiana Avenue, that is awesome. I met with Dane Chekolinski, whose name is just as bad as mine and Warpockles. 
but I, I pronounced it right, I think. Uh, he spent two hours with, with me talking about that. It will enhance innovation and collaboration. It looks so promising, especially if we can spread it out to the rural communities where I live. That'd be a wonderful thing. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that. Right now, the economy does appear, on the surface at least, like it's going well. I know some of you saw the New York Times article from, I think, yesterday, uh, talking about how it might be tough for Democrats here in Wisconsin, might be tough for Tony Evers, because, yeah, the economy seems to be going well for some of us, but not everybody. I assure you, I am a teacher. I spent the last year subbing in local schools. I see every day the effects of poverty. Yes, there are more jobs, but how many of them are family-sustaining jobs? Why all this economic growth? Why is it not being seen in higher wages? You want to attract young people, young women? Make sure they're paid just as much as men? Right now, we know in Wisconsin, full-time women workers make about $10,000 less than men. I want to work on that. I still see too many families struggling to make ends meet. Too many workers working paycheck to paycheck. Many are still a health care crisis away from bankruptcy. So that's one thing. One out of five children still live in poverty. Yes, I would refinance school loans. I would work on health care. Um, Foxconn, billions of dollars, all going to one company. I think we could have made that money go further if we had spread it around the state. Invested in Wisconsin entrepreneurs and nonprofits already here and working to solve problems like opioid addiction, sex trafficking, gun violence, suicides. We could have invested that money in attracting more doctors, nurses, corrections officers, defense attorneys, teachers, all the things where we have a labor shortage. I'm almost, okay, let me just finish this way with my favorite Paul Bartelt story. So one of the best pieces of advice I got was to join the Chamber of Commerce, and it's allowed me to meet so many people I wouldn't. So I watched him as he talked to young, the coastal um, young professionals at the Volrath Company. And I wrote about it on LinkedIn. And you can find it if you want to. It's kind of cool because it's gotten over 400 people have seen it, 100 likes. That's much, much more than anything else I published there. Um, it's not because I'm a great writer. I think I'm pretty good. I've been doing it for a long time. But because people like him. And here's what he said about this community. It's humming. We have a labor shortage, but we still make things here. I stole that quote from him. He also said, Sheboygan is the kind of place where if you really want to, you can make a difference. That's all I've wanted to do my whole life. I would so love to work with all of you. I would find it an honor to have this position. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, just a yes or no question for both of you. Uh, do you support sanctuary status for municipalities or at the state level? In terms of immigration? Yes. I would defer to Marcos for that. If he supports it, I support it. Because <laughs> I really believe, I really... Um, Just yes or no. Try to, um, I think we should look at it. We have a labor shortage. Yes. Okay. I marched with the DACA people, with the Dreamers. Yes. Uh, no, I think our immigration policy is best set on a national level. I definitely disagree with that. But we're, we're talking about state stuff. Yeah, and this is a relatively uh, brief question for both of you. What is what? What are the position do you have with regard to Act Ten? Whether it should be repealed or modified? I assume each of you have a position on that. Sure. Um, I don't think it's possible to repeal it at this point. Let's just try to make up for all those cuts. I was part of those demonstrations down in Madison. Some of my best friends and I have been a teacher. We've lost some great people, and teachers are telling themselves not to go into teaching. Teachers are telling their children, "Don't go into education." It's the most rewarding career I've ever had. And I see people choosing not to because they're making less money, because they feel demoralized. I, w I was, people I know took that personally. Maybe you didn't need it personally when you were attacking their benefits that they gave up higher wages for. So I don't think we can repeal it, but I would, hurt, I would work hard to correct it. Um, so I, I support it. I think it was, um, uh, when we really boil it down, it comes to uh, as many of you who uh, work somewhere or employ people, uh, you usually have an employer uh, contribution portion and an employee contribution for not only your health care but also for your retirement. That wasn't happening in Wisconsin, and uh, I think it was is, is time 
that uh, it does. I mean, I've uh, most of my family members uh, are, are teachers, and um, I know um, they, the, the one of the positive impacts that I don't think gets talked about. Um, while this was going on, um, I was a few years out of college, so I had a lot of college friends who went in education, and the way the old system worked is it was automatically if you had the lowest seniority, you were out. So. Uh, as school districts were uh, cutting back, shrinking their uh, teachers, they found themselves bouncing all the way around the state and not really in a stable living situation. Uh, one of the positive things with Act 10 is you could keep a good teacher uh, it, regardless of their uh, seniority. It gave the school district the option of doing that. And I saw the positive benefit that it had for uh, a number of my uh, college classmates who are now able to uh, stay in one place for more than a year without fear of, uh, you know, having to look for another job in a couple of months at a different district. Mike? The uh, cities of Manitowoc, Two Rivers, Port Washington, and Sheboygan have been working with the Department of Administration and the Governor's Office to see Sheboygan in these areas along Lake Michigan declared a national marine sanctuary by NOAA. Everything was going fine. The governor had submitted the application, and um, a few months back, he decided to pull that back. If you're elected, would you uh, lobby the governor to change the position, whoever he is, and uh, bring this back into uh, possibility for these communities? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, absolutely, I was supportive of the project when uh, it was first proposed and all the way through the project. I think, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, as we know all too well, uh, Facebook and social media can kind of gin up some uh, mistruths, half-truths, things that uh, aren't necessarily the case. And unfortunately, I think uh, that's what we saw in this case. Uh, the um, uh, federal government, who had the uh, uh, wrote the, the, all the documents around it, um, actually worked with the state. At one point, they uh, had a different definition of what the high mar uh, high water mark was, and property owners along Lake Michigan were concerned that this was a way for uh, that that then uh, their uh, federal government could take more of their property. They actually worked uh, the the feds did and changed it so it followed the uh, Wisconsin. DNR definition of high water mark. So really there was no change, but by that time I think uh, unfortunately it had seen uh, too much, uh, the, the governor had gotten too much pressure for whatever reason, uh, canceled it. So I'm happy to continue uh, working on it. Um, was in discussions with somebody to see if uh, maybe legislation instead of the governor having unilateral control over these things. Uh, I'm an advocate for uh, more the, leg uh, the greater legislative process, uh, bringing the state legislatures into it. So that's a long way of saying yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you for asking. I was in an audience when you, Mayor Vandersteen, talked about how this could be an educational opportunity for the youth, and I so thank you for that. That's exactly what it can do, and so much else. I happened to be in Washington, D.C. the day they announced that Scott Walker had, had a change of heart about that. I was uh, part of an environmental group testifying for GLRI funds, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funds that we still have to keep fighting for. Um, and we were shocked, all of us environmentalists, uh, to hear that he had changed his mind. I mean, he was one of the first people to sign it and promote it. So I don't know the politics behind it. I think, yes, we have to lobby for it. Almost everybody is for it, except for some, some... I guess I would say extremist people who are scaring people about losing property rights, and I'm so glad you support it too. Okay, it's one o'clock, so that's a cut off time. Are you guys willing to stick around if anybody yeah, has any time. questions? Um, otherwise, I know we want to give out some parting gifts. <laughs>